doing some tuning on the Terminator X on this automatic. Yep, it's an AOD Fox body. Uh, this is this engine was built by Anderson Ford Motorsport. It's got a lot of Anderson goodies on it, plus a lot of good Edelbrock stuff. So as you can see here, just getting the idle down. Yes, the cruise control still works. Let's listen to it chop. Sounds good. Okay, so I went ahead and did a couple pulls, a couple data logs on here. And for an automatic car, it's a little different than a manual car. But as you can see here, I got this range going to help it idle extremely strong. So I'll go ahead and keep cruising it, keep tuning it, keep getting the fuel dialed in. And one of the things I'm trying to help dial in on this car is the startup cold starts especially warm starts pretty decent it's got a as you guys can tell it's got a pretty good size cam in it so we have to adjust the park position down to make it work I'll give you guys a quick glimpse of that I'll go ahead and shut it off all right and you can see where it was at I had the USB link on so right now under warm starts, it actually starts up pretty decent. You gotta hold the ignition, uh, the you gotta hurt, uh, turn. Oh, I'm sorry, you gotta hold the key down probably a little longer than some people would probably prefer. But with the modifications on the engine and everything, it's price you're gonna have to pay. But it does start up pretty good. I still gotta dial in the cold start. So um, for example, uh, so yeah, you turn out the car and then. Went and grab something. Time to turn it back on real time. Let's see what it does. Just like that, it's idling. A little bit more I can adjust, but as you can tell, you had to hold the key down while cycling the ignition uh, a little bit longer probably than you'd probably want. I'll work on that a little bit more, but yeah. Um, but yeah, in an automatic car, check this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the car in drive. And I got it to where it doesn't try and stall because it drops so much RPM. Same with reverse. can see barely a shift in rpm and now back to park it should idle up a little bit and then come right back down okay so we got that pretty good now it's just that darn cold start that i gotta work with um i would film the pull but this is a customer car uh at anderson so i'm not gonna do that i'm not going too wild with it i just want to show you guys what's involved with a little street tuning on this um i did adjust the uh of the map here this is a custom map that I built for this automatic car and I'll go ahead and click on the USB link here it's still adjusting the fueling a little bit you can see the little dial indicator where it's at and with the size cam in it you can see my target idle speed is set to 8, uh, 875 I had it at 900 but I didn't like how much it was kind of wanting to surge because it was kind of in a sweet spot where I wanted to idle at so I dropped it just to you know 25 rpm and now it's actually idling really good okay so yep um again this is a customer car that i'm di help dialing in and uh yeah i'm just going to do some more just regular driving with it we did do some pulls on the dyno and everything to get the uh watt um dialed in pretty good so yeah, I'm just gonna drive this on home and probably call it a day. Gotta let the car cool down all the way and try a cold start again tomorrow. Okay, got the Terminator X software pulled up here in the garage. I know this is kind of just off the cuff. I'm just holding my phone. I don't have any of my fancy dancy GoPros or camera equipment handy. So 
Uh, so yeah, so let's take a look at what I made here for this car. Uh, what I did was I took one of the base calibrations originally from the uh, Holly software here, which is also what's in the three and a half inch touchscreen, loaded up uh, into the SD card already. I went ahead and took one of those, looked at it, and realized what I wanted to change here. So this timing map you're going to see resembles almost nothing in regards to... Um, the base calibration, which is okay. Base calibrations are just that. They're base calibrations. So um, they're not the end-all, be-all for, you know, just like in the Mega Squirt, Micro Squirt, or in Tuner Studio software, those are not end-all, be-all. You got to figure out what your car likes. For example, this car, being an automatic, having a stall converter, and it really needs a rear-end gear. Uh, I don't know what rear-end gear is in it, but based on the Anderson cam that's in it, it should have like at least a 390 or 410, and it does not have that. So what I had to do is bump up the resolution. Resolution means amount of space in between all these blocks here for your KPA and your RPM. That's why there's a lot of resolution in all the idle cells. Because once this car starts getting below 1500 RPM right here, it wants to kind of buck on it a little bit. It does not like low RPM cruising. So what I did was I expanded the resolution here from 700 RPM all the way up to 1500. It's a nice big block of resolution there. And also, um, you may not know this until you start the car, where the car likes to idle, what kind of vacuum it sits at. This car likes to idle right around here. And as you can see, KPA wise, between you know 77 and 67, so in pretty much in the lower 70 range. So I made that resolution uh, pretty expansive. So we've got 81, 77, 74, 70, 67, 63, so on and so forth. So I kind of evened it out every three or four, and it seems to be doing okay. And right now, the way the car drives, again, just cruising. Not wide open throttle, wide open throttle, that's easy. That's easy to work with. We got that done at the dyno at Anderson. But the low RPM cruising, after expanding the resolution or RPM and expanding the resolution a little bit, the KPA, car only shutters a little bit, probably right around 1100 RPM when it's coming to its full idle speed. And this is a little different because it's not a manual transmission. So one of the options here, which is a great option, but there's a reason why I have this little block off right here, 12 and 14 degrees timing, surrounded by 16 degrees, and then, of course, it starts, as soon as it uh, starts coming off the idle and starts driving, it ramps in a lot of timing, and that gives that, that grunt, and it works really well on this car. Being that the, the cam that's in it, it really wants to go. But being that, and you can see here, uh, when you put it from park position, to reverse or drive the rpm wants to drop pretty rapidly and also you know once it gets up here under low rpm that means the car's about to die so i ramped in a lot of timing as it's going from park position to reverse to drive so that way when it swings down it has the timing to ramp it back up into its happy place and as you guys saw when the car was warmed up after i did that um just a a slight hesitation, very, very minimal notice RPM drop, very minimal. So, yeah, if you got an AOD card and you're, you know, using Terminator X, I highly suggest doing this because the option for, uh, let's see here, uh, where is it? How am I forgetting this? Oh, it's the idle, duh. <laughs> okay. So idle spark, this, when this is enabled automatically, regardless of your timing map, and especially for manual transmissions, because my car, um, you could have your timing set to 50, just for, as an example, no one would actually do that, at least I hope not, please don't do that. Um, even if you had this, say, set at 20 degrees, under your, well, you can't see it now because I don't have it hooked up, but um, idle tuning, Ignition timing, you may see this number read all over the place. That's because this idle is trying to reach a target idle speed. So regardless of where it's at on your map, on your timing map here, if you have that option enabled, 
if you have this enabled, it's automatically going to try to find the amount of timing it needs to hold your target idle speed. So don't freak out. Don't think that your timing's not synced up or anything along those lines. But as soon as you come off idle, it starts using your timing map. I hope that all makes sense. It made a lot more sense once I realized what it was doing. And with an automatic car, it seems like um, since the park position, the um, the park position is still putting like a little bit of a load on the engine, reverse, drive, all that is going to be different. So I think that's why it's reacting a little differently. It would still idle just fine, but it'd idle a little higher than I'd like it to. So after doing this, it fixed it. So AOD cars when in park, drive or reverse. It helps to have a little bit of a range for its idle to kind of hunt around. Even though it's got 12 and 14 down here, I was still noticing under ignition timing, it was still saying like around um, 10, 12, sometimes 16, uh, if it was starting to surge a little bit, especially when I first uh, built this map. So yeah, hope that helps some people out here in regards to AODs on a Terminator X. Works real good. This system is awesome. I even did a data log to kind of just see what the cruising driving was because I'm still trying to dial in the startup. As you see, I got the park position pretty low on this thing because when it starts up, um, it was idling or it was you know flashing up to about 2,500 RPM. I didn't like that, so I brought it all down. That's because I'm using the 1D table. I'd like to thank Leach Motorsports for, I'm sorry, not Leach Motorsports, um, Fix It, um, Fix It Sting, I believe it is, on YouTube. He did the highly detailed Terminator X install on his uh, Two-Tone Fox. But anyway, the 1D table, it works really good. Especially on manual cars, it works better on manual cars, I've noticed, than this. But I'm still, you know, getting this pretty much closed in uh, for the IAC on the 1D table. I noticed that uh, it doesn't like the it doesn't have as much as a wild swing um, when it's going between gears or going between park, reverse, and drive. And startup has actually been pretty decent, but just kind of trying to dial in the uh, the cold start itself to where it cranks up and fires up without having to hold the ignition cylinder like forever. So I'm still working that out. So. Um, I know I kind of rambled on. There's a lot to cover in the Terminator X software that I've learned that works, that I found that works really well on Fox Body Mustangs. But I thought this one was kind of unique because it's an AOD car. AOD car with a nice, healthy Anderson camshaft in it. I'm not going to disclose all the details. Again, this is a customer car. They didn't give me permission to go over everything in detail, but uh, I thought it was pretty cool to kind of go over what I was doing and what I've learned. So, anyway. We're going to go ahead and close down the software. We've already, uh, I've already saved this to the ECU, so I'm not going to save these new changes because they're not loaded. Okay, went ahead and shut that down. There's a lot to come still with the uh, Terminator X. I have a lot to share, and I'm definitely going to be posting a video soon in regards to, because you can see I still have Tuner Studio on my laptop here. And, um, yeah, so there's a lot to cover still in regards to my thoughts between both the Terminator X and the uh, the Tuner Studio and Micro Squirt. And I think it's going to be an interesting video to talk about, especially for people on the fence between both systems. So anyway, we won't go into detail now, but you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. A little uh, information there in regards to an automatic Mustang. Oh, hello. Uh, let's close this. Took forever to open, probably because I haven't opened it in so long. Oh, great, there's an update available. Oh, this ought to be fun. Anyway, I'm just going to let it do its thing. So, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.